So, uh, turns out the history of sentience releases tomorrow, and, um, I still haven't done this video yet, so... I guess we're just gonna talk about her for now. So I'll share what I know, and what I think you guys should know during the patch release. There is a lot to say, so I've left the timestamps for your own convenience. Alright, so I think I'm just gonna address the question that pretty much everyone probably has in their minds. Is the Hersher of Sentience worth pulling? Hell yeah, she is. The Hersher of Sentience is more than just worth pulling. She's one of the strongest Valkyries they've released in a long time. Currently, it seems that every physical weather is dominated by the Hersher of Sentience. And I'm talking as a DPS, not as a support. I'll list off the bosses right now that we've seen. Dark Yan, Jizo, Homu, and Asaka. She took the top spot in all of these bosses. Actually, taking a look at the bosses that the Chinese server got, it should be very clear uh, how important the Hersher of Sentience is. There is one caveat, and that is if you're under level 81, I don't think she will be as important if you already have Celestial Him. If you don't have Celestial Him, I do think that she is worth it though, just because having an Impair Source is very important. And the reason why I say this is because the meta above level 81 is very cutthroat. Uh, below 81, you really just want more varied sources of damage. So it is possible to delay the Hirsch of Sentience if you already have Celestial Him. There's a chance she also takes the Quantum Emperor, but I think Swallowtail will take that one. The only boss I don't think she will take is Shadow Knight, so Fervent Tempo Delta might be the only other physical DPS standing. Now keep in mind, I do think that this dominance is going to be temporary and she'll eventually transition to a support. For example, if Bright Knight got a pre-arm, it's very likely that she will take the top score on Dark Jianyun and Jiza. But even as a support, she's proven herself to be better than Celestial Him, which is honestly kind of insane. Alright, that's enough raving. Let's actually talk about what you need to know on her release. So for her weapons, I would absolutely recommend getting the Signature weapon. Uh, it's extremely powerful, it gives a lot of SP regeneration and stats. Uh, substitute Gauntlets are fine. They're not going to feel great, but if you somehow miss the Gauntlets, uh, sh she's not going to be a useless Valkyrie, that's for sure. Now as for the Signature Stigmata, I do recommend for people under Nirvana, like Red Lotus players and below, uh, you should probably skip the Signature Stigmata. And the reason why that is, is because, uh, at, at least at the current moment, she's going to be mainly used as a DPS, not as a support. Uh, she will eventually transition to a support, and where these Stigmata are probably going to be a lot more important. But at least for right now, you can focus on gearing up your other Valkyries if you do need to. Otherwise, if you're in Nirvana and above, I do recommend getting this set, just because it's probably going to be the best support set. The Hirsher of Sentience is a burst mode Valkyrie, so I don't recommend Stigmata like Michelangelo. Though it is true in Memorial Arena, we don't use the ultimate, so Schrodinger gets a special case there. And I kinda hear you guys, but Kibi! I don't want a bold Schrodinger! Okay, I'm actually not gonna be using Schrodinger for my budget videos. I'll be using Jingwei Marco Lier, and probably sub out Marco for Dark Jiren Yuan as well. So you won't have to worry about Schrodinger balding in my videos, but if you want those top top scores, you will want Schrodinger. So the gear that you should actually put on her for Abyss is uh, Serene Ascendant top, uh, Direct mid, and Direct bottom. The Direct set is farmable, so if you are missing Serene Ascendant top, you can put Direct top. And if you don't have the Direct set right away, you can also just use Jingwei Marco Lier. Funny enough, I would also use that set for support, though I would sub out Jingwei for Gluttony top. Otherwise, if you have Gluttony top, Beach May mid, and Newton bot, that's just generally a really good set for supporting. Now the reason why I recommend these Stigmata is because her playstyle is actually quite similar to Starlet Astrologos, except a little bit inverted. She does more damage on field, but she also does damage off field. Uh, so when you put Starlet Astrologos with her Hersher of Sentience, you get kind of an insane combo. Let me show you what I mean. Right, so if you have these two on a team, you could basically go AFK on the third member and still kill the boss. Uh, these two are just ridiculous and probably going to see play for a long, 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 long time to support pretty much any DPS in the game. One thing I should note about the off-field damage that the Hersher of Sentience does is that it can apply Newton, Beach May, and her Signature Stigmata 3-set effect. 
So because the Hurtshirt of Sentience has three gathers in her kit, there's not much complexity in her uh, Abyss gameplay. Um, the thing you might forget the most is her evasion skill, which gives 15 SP to the entire team. But otherwise, it's rather simple. Get SP, use ult, switch out. Or if you're using her as a DPS, you can just bonk away. But if there's one thing you should keep in mind is that you should not stay on the Hirsch of Sentience too long. You just want to use her combo attacks and get out because that's her primary way of getting SP. Now for Memorial Arena, there's one thing you need to know and that's the chain attack. The chain attack has a special property which stops the clock entirely. This is not really described in the skill description at all, so you just have to know it. Now this does not count as a time fracture, but it also doesn't work the same way as the ult, so your skill cooldowns will not pause. So it's really important that you do not stack this chain attack with time fracture. You want to use time fracture after the chain attack or before it even starts. So in this case, we combo attack, evade, and the evade gets popped for time fracture. You attack a little bit, and then as the time fracture ends, you use the chain attack to extend more time. There's one other way to do it, which is after the combo attack, we use the chain right away instead of evading, which is naturally where there's no time fracture. Then you evade right after the chain ends. And you'll actually have time to do one more combo attack, but it is a little bit risky with Newton on Windbeam. By the way, this is only important for Memorial Arena. It does not affect the Abyss timer at all. There's one other technique that will be used a lot in Memorial Arena, which is uh, basically when you QTE Celestial Him and you want to go right to Hershey of Sentience uh, without any delay, you just press uh, the Hershey of Sentience icon before evading on the QTE to cancel it, and you are able to switch right away. Speaking of Memorial Arena, if you're using her as a DPS, there's only one team I suggest, which is the Moonbeam Celestial Him uh, Hershey of Sentience team. I've tried a lot of other teams, so they didn't work quite as well as I'd like. Um, this team is just by far the most effective, at least for now. However, she finds a lot of use in Memorial as a support as well, and she is very effective there too. Regarding how she develops in Memorial Arena, there's going to be tons of videos in the future, so let's not worry about that too much. The last thing I haven't really covered is, uh, is ranking her up worth it. There's a debatable skill at uh, S1, which she gives 25% crit damage, which is a hefty amount. Now, in my opinion, this skill is just absolutely not worth going for, and the reason why I say that is, uh, if you're pulling an extra Valk, that could just be like another S rank Valk entirely, or if you're unlucky, an entire uh, Stigmata set. So, in my opinion, this 25% crit damage is going to develop your account way less than what you could potentially be getting. Like, just imagine if that was a Hersher of Reason, a Hersher of Thunder, or like Shuijing, Jingsheng Tan. There's just too much that you're losing out on if you're going for this. Like, overall, S0 is not too much different from S1. Uh, you'll be able to do almost everything that you need to do with S0, so uh, just don't fall for the S1 bait. I guess the last thing I haven't talked about is her free to play performance, which is really good, but I haven't really talked about it much. Um, there will absolutely be v budget videos with her in the future, so don't worry about that. If there's anything else you want me to cover, let me know. Uh, this one was pretty hastily made together because I didn't have much time, but I'll see you for the next video.